This video is sponsored by Squarespace. The Simpsons costume evolution. Da na 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 na. It's history, Dan. Da na na na. And now the Simpsons are Disney. It all works. It all comes out in the wash. <laughs> the world global entertainment domination wash. There's nothing to worry about. Now everyone go to sleep. The Simpsons have been an iconic animated staple of American Sunday television for 35 years. And to help me keep my Simpsons facts straight, I have recruited my great British BFF, Lydia, from Simpsons Theory. That's enough! That's enough! Hey look, I'm a Simpsons person now too! Wait, 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 what does it look like when I laugh as a Simpson? Let me try, let me try. <laughs> Ooh, I look so handsome. Kenny, you remember those amazing Mario Ice Capades costumes and Luigi had a gun? Well, to follow up on that iconic year of pop culture figure skating, the 1990 Ice Capades 51st edition brought the Simpsons on a live tour. Barbie was also backed by popular demand for a second year, which is hilarious. Wait, should we do a Barbie evolution too? These costumes are all fascinating simply because they are articulated, as in they have a mechanism in the head to make their mouths open and close. And watching them articulated is fascinating. Seeing the costumes talk, half talk really, they're, they're not that great. They're not like modern articulated costumes, but it's pretty impressive for 1990. They appeared during the show at random interstitial segments with pre-recorded bits littered with that early Simpsons chaos and humor. And a cup for the and then eventually they all make it down to the ice and there's a full ice skating number. It's, it's pretty great, I have to say. I would have loved to have seen this. So these costumes, let's break them down one at a time. Homer just looks concerned. <laughs> Homer just looks so concerned, but he's got the blue pants, he's got the white shirt. He's nice and big and round. I, I, I'm loving Homer, I'm loving Homer. Bart has this weird lip. The lips on all Simpsons costumes are gonna be rough for like two decades, so buckle in. We start in a really rough spot. I love his hairdo. The hairdo across all the Simpsons are really great, but Bart has all those sharp little spikes. Lisa's hair is just like a collection of pyramids. Both Lisa and Marge have great accessories, like those big bulky pearly necklaces that delineate between the head of the costume and the body of the costume. And all of the costuming, other than Bart's blue shirt, is on point. Why is Bart wearing a blue shirt? Bart doesn't wear a blue shirt. Then we have Maggie. I'm loving this Maggie costume. It's just a potato sack with a head on it. It's fantastic. It's got the, the pacifier, got huge big eyes and that cute little blue bow. Maggie's cute. Maggie's gonna come and go through these costume evolutions. Where we start as a full bodied costume performer is fascinating to where we end up. Marge's hair is probably one of my favorite parts of all the Simpsons costumes. It has so much detail and care put into it because it's animated like this giant pillar of, of, of like bally hair curls. It's like a Chuck E. Cheese ball pit beehive. It's so cool. Man, I would love to have a wig like this just to wear to the grocery store, obviously. There's this great series of photos with Matt Groening out there in the streets of LA with these with these puppets. And while the Simpsons were huge at the time, I like to imagine people seeing this photo shoot going on and being like, hey, it's the Simpsons with their uh, uh, tax attorney. <laughs> That's what I said, Matt Groening. Matt Groening, Matt Groening, Matt Groening. Matt Groening. It's not my fault his last name is that. <laughs> From here, these costumes would continue to be used for many random appearances like a Fox block party in 1992 and Six Flags over Mid-America for half a dozen summer dates randomly. Now, while I was crawling around searching for more information about The Simpsons at this time, there was this random DeviantArt post with four images of a Simpsons live touring mall show from the early 90s that clearly shows a Principal Skinner outfit, but honestly, I cannot find anything else about these performances. I did manage to find one video of one random mall performance of a Simpsons live appearance, but it didn't have all of these sets, so I feel like this is kind of lost to time, but this set of, of uh, costumes very closely resembles the ice capades uh, versions. At the same time the Simpsons live tour was traveling around the country with the ice capades, another set of Simpsons costumes were stirring around on the West Coast in the Hollywood area for all sorts of promotional appearances, most specifically the Hollywood Christmas Parade. Now these costumes are rough. 
Ruff is, Ruff is being generous, quite honestly. Like, extremely rough. I don't even know what was happening here. Like, <laughs> like, I'm theorizing that the Fox Animation Studios had, like, these costumes made locally. Let's start with Homer. Why is Homer's head inflating? Can someone tell me why Homer's head is inflating? I don't, I really don't get that. And why are all of the Simpsons doing duck lips? What's the duck face? I thought the duck face was over. All of the costumes arms are the same. They just made 10 arms <laughs> and sewed them onto the characters without any discretion or, or choices. It's just like, yeah, yeah, just make five left arms and make five right arms and just sew them on, same size, all the way across the board. The eyes are just viciously bulging. I've built a lot of puppets in my days and one of the hardest things to do is find the right materials and the right execution for eyes. Eye focus, eye sculpts. Eyes are really hard when you're making big characters like this. We're looking at 10 ice cream bowls glued onto foam heads with like black Sharpie circles drawn in the middle of them. There's just no consideration whatsoever for any of these eyes or any of these eye focus. Like, what are we doing? Marge has this, a variety of different ball sizes in her big beehive wig. Uh, Lisa's hair are all of, again, they're like these little short little round cones uh, littered all over her head. Uh, and Bart, it looks like someone went in there with like a, like a nail file and just like chiseled out like little scoop, like someone was like carving a watermelon. These costumes are horrifying. Again, we have a blue shirt, Bart. Uh, someone explained that to me. These costumes appeared multiple times in multiple Hollywood Christmas parades. They were a staple for a while. Early 1991, Do the Bartman was a huge phenomenon. With a special music video that aired after a full length episode, people loved the chaos that was Bart and his short eating. There's this random appearance of Bart doing the whole production number from a live show that I, ca I cannot place where this live show is, but I think it's the UK because after the live show, they bring up David Copperfield at the end and it's not the David Copperfield you're thinking of. This Bart costume is just the worst. Seriously, it's like Mac tonight. It's got like a moon shaped face. Do the Bart name but not clearly as terrifying as a pregnant Nancy Cartwright wearing a Bart costume at the American Music Awards in 1991. <laughs> this is dream haunting. Get on with the show! It is bonkers. Not to mention the ladies of Scientologist, but we can't get into that. I don't want to get sued today. You remember when she, as a Scientologist, she was recording robocall messages as Bart Simpson, encouraging people to transfer over to Scientology? Am I the only one who remembers that? Hey, what's happening, man? This is Bart Simpson. <laughs> Just kidding. Don't hang up. This is Nancy Cartwright. I'm now auditing on new OT7. So they send Bart over to the UK to start doing promotions for the Simpsons in 1991. During that Bart visit, he met Princess Diana and gave her a doll that essentially photobombed every other celebrity photo taken that day, which I think is so hilarious. Princess Diana spent the rest of the time at this charity event holding a Bart Simpson doll as she's going around shaking hands with dignitaries and famous British people. Hey, hey, where am I? This isn't my bag. Pack your bags and join Louie live at the Simpsons next Saturday. The late 90s gave us one of the single greatest pieces of television promotion ever ever, The Simpsons House. And lucky for us, that house came with its own set of unique costume characters. Wait, Lydia, didn't you do a video on this house? This house was every Simpsons fan's dream. So after watching hundreds of episodes, the architects built the layout and then came the sweet, sweet details. The pouring and painting of concrete on the floor rather than carpet to mimic the show's flat colors. Then came the corncob curtains and of course, rows and rows of identical shirts and shorts in Bart Simpson's closet. And look at him right here, he's loving it. I don't think those shorts and shirts are gonna fit him though. Look at the size of that freaking head. Nearing the house's completion, there were queues around the block to go and tour it, with Matt Groening even coming up for a jolly. But a winner still needed to be found. So in collaboration with Pepsi products, buying a drink would give you a number. And if the number then matched the one showed during the episode, The City of New York vs Homer Simpson, then ding, 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 we found a winner. But it was all of a bit of an anti-climax. The winner was an older lady living in rural America, and she didn't want the house one bit. 
and so it was left empty. Matt Groening's solution was to blow the whole house up. And let me tell you, that guy loves a good explosion. Luckily, the house was bought and loved in the end. None other than an employee of the same construction company that built it. And if you should visit it today, you may not even recognize it. The boring homeowners association demanded that the house was to be repainted. So the bright colors were painted a dull beige, but you can still see Groening's drawing of Homer in the cement. But to learn more about the wacky wacky antics of this story, like Dan mentioned, I did an entire video all about it. The house had a new set of costumes made for it by Fox Animation Studios, and boy, what a step forward, while also strangely taking a huge step backwards in some ways. Homer is probably the, the one that got the least scathed in this redesign. He gets, he gets more defined hair at the top and his head sculpt is a little bit more proportionate to the rest of his body. I love his shirt, I love his pants. He's got, it, it, Homer looks great. And he's got like that dark brown, like beardy muzzle, which I, which I love. And that's actually how the performer inside sees. Marge gets a much taller hairdo. Her hair looks really great. The necklace, the face, just everything about the design of the face gets tightened and brought back. Lisa becomes a thumb person. You know, like moody people who shop at Hot Topic and like put little spikes on their baseball hats? That's what her head looks like. It just looks like a baseball hat covered with like moody emo Hot Topic spikes. Her leg skin. Why did we design this costume with such long legs, knowing that she's like literally one of the shortest characters in the family? Why are her legs so wrinkly? Why does it look like Lisa just lost 400 pounds only in her legs? And Bart, Bart, man. Okay, the silhouette of Bart, the, the look of Bart, it actually is improving. I'm liking it a lot. The hair looks a lot cleaner. The eyes are, are like kind of set into his head the right way. There's a picture of Bart sitting in his room in the Simpsons house. And it's just like, wh why is his head so massive? And his upper lip extends out far beyond any upper lip ever should at any creature ever. Kenny wants to know if I would live in the Simpsons house. And the answer is absolutely yes. If that happened today, there's no way this house wouldn't have been accepted because of the financial gain that you could have made from the investment of just making this an Airbnb, a rental. It's a, des it's a tourist destination. It's so cool. Okay, so there's this one specific Treehouse of Horror episode where Homer becomes 3D, like, because he, like, goes through a secret portal behind a bookcase and then kind of wanders out into the real world, which seriously broke my brain as a kid. It apparently also broke the brains of several IMAX executives because they loved it so much it helped pave the way for a big cinematic event called Cyber World 3D. A collection of giant sized animated shorts made specifically for IMAX and to promote it, a very specific set of Simpson characters were created. At least that's my theory, because it's very clear that the Bart and Homer are modeled after the CGI counterparts, and it's just too weirdly made not to have been part of Cyberworld marketing. It's just, it's in the same year. The, the Simpsons also got a Hollywood Walk of Star thing. So let's talk about each of these characters one by one. Homer looks great from the neck down. I love his big bulbous body, his big blue pants, his white shirt, uh, but I don't understand his face sculpt much at all. It's, it's a beautiful face sculpt. It's gorgeous. It's honestly the best looking set of costumes we've had so far, but the decision to make his eyes look up and to the right while his lips are kind of like curled up. And it, it, I just don't understand what the pose, what the story, what the intention was for this costume when you're taking photos of it. Cause it's, it, it looks like Homer doesn't care. Bart is another interesting design. It, his face just kind of gets a little bit round. His eyes are almost too far apart. He looks like a chameleon. It looks like Bart could track two bugs flying on both sides of his head at the same time with the intention of catching it with his extra long tongue. Lisa is so funny because the way that they translated her hair turned it into this complete flat front uh, kind of uh, cut. So her hair is super spiky on the back, but on the front, she looks like she's putting her face through like a like a sun cardboard cutout for an elementary school production of, you know, like, uh, I don't know, some sunshine play. I'm not a state, I'm a monster. Dress is made of a more rigid material. It almost looks like a solid animated piece. And what's this? What's this, my, my dear boy Bart, wearing a red orange shirt? Ah, oh, be still my heart. But here I'm saving the best for last. Here's where we really innovate the Simpsons costume family with the Marge costume. 
Her hair looks really great, nice and tight. I really love her eyelashes, her, her little nose, her cute little lips, the outfit, it's just all great. But in her arms, nestled in her arms, is sweet little baby Maggie. No longer a full walk around costume character. Now we have Marge carrying around Maggie. And here's where it gets even cooler because they went full dream finder with this costume. Marge's left hand is fake holding Maggie. Instead, the performer's arm fishes inside of the Maggie costume, holding a, a puppeteered rod, which then allows Maggie to look left and right. It is so cool. It is so cool. I'll take weird lazy-eyed Homer and, and weird flat-haired Lisa and, uh, and, and chameleon Bart just to get puppet Maggie. I love it. Previously, when we saw the Simpsons travel internationally for promotions, we saw just the American Bart costume being shipped over to the UK. That's not the case here with this German Homer and Marge. They're very clearly one-offs. I can only find these two photos. Homer just looks like a minion. Why is he wearing suspenders? And why are his pants so large? Quite honestly, it looks like they forgot or are missing some of the ribbing or body padding that's supposed to go inside the costume to like bulk everything out. And just as a quick solution, now here's something that is super strange to me. For several years in the early double aughts, Fox Animation Studios continued to bring back out the Simpsons house set of costumes in all of their magnificent sun faded glory, while the newer CGI Simpsons were all in use somewhere else. I don't know what the deal was here, but we had many, many promotional events for 300th episode, 350th episode, 400th episode, where they're dragging out all these Simpsons house costumes and they look rough, but we get a peek at Maggie. What I love about the Maggie costume, it's the original color yellow that the fabric was that all the rest of the costumes were supposed to, <laughs> that started out as. It's like you can almost see the popularity of the colors based off of how sun faded they are. I don't know, and I don't know why. I don't know why they kept using them when they had that otherwise beautiful set of costumes. To promote cable television in 2006, a Bulgarian cable company had a year long tour that brought the Simpsons family to Bulgaria, through the countryside, encouraging people to subscribe to cable television. These costumes are iconic. I am obsessed. It's just like they're the perfect blend of bootleg and officially licensed IP. They're just mwah, mwah. I'm loving all of these spooky Bulgarian costumes. The Simpsons movie was so good. Kenny, did you like the Simpsons movie? You didn't like Ipa? Man, I was so hyped to be like, Kenny's gonna love this part of the video, but now I'm sad. And thank God for the Simpsons movie, Kenny, because it finally properly motivated the company to make some decent costumes. These modern Simpsons costumes are dynamite, man. We struggled for decades to perfect the mouths of these monstrous costumes. And now finally, after some 17 years, all these characters finally have proper faces. And the biggest thing that they did is with the eyes. Now all of the characters' eyes aren't bulging, they're really well proportioned, and they're set into the costume's faces perfectly. They have really great eyebrows, nice settings in the face and cheekbones, so that everything just looks like the cartoon, no matter which way you look at it. It's quite the feat. These costumes even feature specific contouring and detailing with airbrushing around like the eyes and, and certain features of the face to really make certain things pop and other things look shadowed and detailed. I'm loving Marge's hair. Marge's hair looks great. It's the best it's ever looked. And Maggie is a little bit redesigned and improved over the previous costume, bringing her a little bit tighter into the, into the hold of Marge. While previously the last Maggie puppet kind of looked like a toy, this one actually feels like a member of this costume character family. And I love all the lips. Like we finally figured out the lips. None of the lips are like too bulgy or, 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 or like sticking out too far, specifically with Bart and Lisa. Like we really captured how the mouths are supposed to work on these characters. And the costumes all look great from like Marge's and, and Bart's shoes to like all of the, like Marge's green dress, Lisa's little dress. Like really, we have figured it out. These are the modern Simpsons costumes that have stuck with us from here on out. These are the costumes that literally appear in theme parks today. Like whenever you go to Universal Studios, these are the Simpsons that you are meeting and they started off with the Simpsons movie. 
Remember how I said that the eyes were important? Well, here's why the eyes are important. Let me introduce you to the Simpsons movie promotional cast in Australia. What is happening here? I am so unwell. Most of the costumes look okay. They look okay. They're, they're very Cyber World-esque, actually. But Bart, Bart, what, what have they done to you? Homer? <laughs> oh my God. I can't even talk about it, Kenny. I don't even know. I don't want to know. Like, I don't know if like, because the toilets like flush in an opposite direction, something also happens with like how data is transferred over the internet. I don't know, like we sent Australia the files and then they like kind of swirled the other way because it's on the other side of the equator. And this is what we, I don't know what the explanation is. $900 dues. I Kenny just told me that apparently Australia had a, a petition to change the name of their money to Dollar Reduce <laughs> because of the Simpsons episode. Oh my God, there's nothing wrong with a bidet, is there? With joining the family of Universal Parks, the costume characters continue to use the Simpson movie design because honestly, it's so perfect. They took that perfection streak and kept it going in 2017 when the parks introduced Krusty the Clown and Sideshow Bob. Oh my God, these costumes are gorgeous. Look at them. First and foremost, the hair on both of these things are stunning. Like it's it's similar to how we designed the Marge hair with all those little detailed bobbles, but now it's like they're, they're, they're wild designs. Like the hair design on Krusty and Bob are, are crazy. The Krusty costume is clearly inspired by the Homer costume because obviously, right, if you know the Simpsons, they were gonna be the same character than they weren't, yada, yada, yada. It's clear the body design is just the Homer design with different pants and different shirt on. It's just the Homer bottom for Krusty. But the top, man, look at how beautiful it is. Just the colors, the color of the skin, the nose, like the muzzle, the, 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 the joy, the giant openness of the mouth. Specifically, keeping in mind how much we struggled with making costume character designs of this cartoon and the, how weird the mouths have been, to then see this stunning mouth design on Krusty blows me out of the water. And then Sideshow Bob is just so menacing yet so joyful. Like you're thinking to yourself, well, I, do I really want to meet Sideshow Bob? Is he gonna try to stab me? Then you have to remember, no, he's just really interested in stabbing Bart. You should be safe because he, he loves you as an adoring fan. I really want to see now Universal step it up. Like I know that Disney now owns The Simpsons, so I don't know how this is quite possible, but like, I want to see a Chief Wiggum. I want to see all the characters. I want to see Barney. I want to see all of these characters translated into giant mascots because now we've figured it out. We have really perfected it. And these costumes are just out of this world. Oh yeah, a Millhouse costume would be incredible. Everything's coming up Millhouse. Any of them, honestly, give me any of them. I'll take them all. Just want to say really quick, a special thanks to Lydia from Simpsons Theory for schooling me on the ways of the Simpsons house. All right, Lydia, tell everybody where they can find you. If these terrifying costumes somehow haven't scarred you from watching The Simpsons ever again, then come and check out my channel. It's called The Simpsons Theory. Thanks for having me, Dan. <laughs> oh? Hey, there's something you don't see in a toilet every day. Don't be like Henry Kissinger and leave your glasses in a toilet. No one must know I dropped them in the toilet. Mm -hmm. Leave a review by heading over to my website that Squarespace helped me put together, dizp.com. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform from which to create your website. Connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members only content. Manage your members, send email notifications, and leverage audience insights all on one easy to use platform. Create a community on your Squarespace website with a fully integrated commenting system that supports threaded comments, replies, and likes. Use their powerful blogging tools to categorize, share, and schedule your posts too. I would absolutely not wear toilet glasses. I'd have to wash them off first. Just a little rinse and hot water, that's all you need. Extend Squarespace's already powerful e-commerce capabilities with Squarespace extensions. These new third-party tools help you manage inventory, promote products, streamline bookkeeping, reconcile and file sales, tax and ship items across the globe. Display posts from your social profiles on your website. Automatically push website content to your favorite social media channels so your followers can share it too. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Disney Dan to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.
So there's all the Simpsons costumes. Boy, oh boy, what a rich, robust history of really awful costumes. But we finally got there, right? We finally got a good set right at the end. Woo, saved by the Simpsons movie. Uh, I had such a fun time researching this and going through this. Special thanks to everyone over on my Patreon, as well as find me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and Twitch. Not to mention our new vlog that Kenny and I are doing all the time. Please stop vlogging. You can watch a vlog right now of Kenny recording this episode, but that was in the future and now is the present. Think about that. <laughs> I love hanging out with you guys. I love talking about costumes. Thanks everyone for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing. You're all amazing. And as always, you rock. <laughs>